Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a radical expression. We have square root of 15 plus the square root of 21 plus the square root of 35 plus 5. And all of that is divided by root 3 plus root 7 plus 2 root 5. And to simplify this expression, I'll be presenting three methods. One of them is going to be incomplete. Guess which one? And I want to start off with the first method and then continue with the third method. All right, let's see how that goes. So for my first method, and I just want to warn you, it's going to be a little painful. All right, ready? Root 15 plus root 21 plus root 35 plus 5 divided by root 3, root 7, and 2 root 5. Notice that the expressions, the radicals at the bottom, will make up all the expressions in the numerator. So like if you multiply uh, root 3 and root 5, you're going to get root 15. This is 3 times 7. This is 5 times 7, so on and so forth. And of course, 5 is an integer, which can be obtained by multiplying root 5 by itself. Make sense? Great. Let's go ahead and do this then. I'm assuming that this expression is going to be of the form, of the form, a root 3 plus b root 5, plus c root 7, plus a possible d as an integer. a, b, c, d are probably, hopefully, integers or at least rationals. Because I don't want to just, you know, deal with irrationals because that's going to be impossible to solve. But if they are rationals, we can solve it. If there is a solution, of course, right? Obviously. Now, do we need d? Think about it. We have a 5, which can be obtained by root 5 times root 5. Actually, by multiplying these two things, we're able to get everything we need. So if you multiply anything by an integer d, you have to have root 3 or root 7 or root 5, or maybe all of them in our equation, but we don't have those. So d needs to be 0, but I still wanted to check if we would need a term like that. Okay? Ready? So now we're going to go ahead and distribute, cross-multiply. I want to start with the variables a root 3 plus b root 5 plus c root 7. I'm going to go ahead and distribute it over the denominator and then combine like terms. And of course, that's going to equal the numerator, right? Let's go ahead and distribute it. a root 3 times root 3. Whenever I get an integer, I'm going to write that first before the radicals. So this is going to be a 3a and then I'm going to get a root 21 plus 2a root 15. So basically, I did this, this, and that, and I'll just continue. Make sense? Plus b root 15, plus b root 35, plus 2b, again, came up to be or not to be, root 5 times root 5 is 5, so that's going to give me 10b. Okay? And then I'm going to do this one, plus c root 21, plus c times 7, which I can write as 7c. And then finally, 2c root 35. Awesome. Let's go ahead and put the like terms together. I'm going to write the integers first. So 3a plus 10b. And I'm going to put a little mark so that I know I went through that term plus 7c. And let's go ahead and put the 21s together. a plus c is the coefficient of root 21. Notice that those are rational numbers. Root 15 is made up of 2a plus b and these two things. And the only thing we have left is b plus 2c all multiplied by root 35. Great. Now, we need to set it equal to the numerator, which is root 15 plus root 21 plus root 35 plus 5. Awesome. How do we get 5? 5 is the only integer. So this needs to be 5. The coefficient of root 21 is 1. This is 1 and this is also 1. So that gives us a system of equations. Can you solve it? Yes, of course, very easily. 3a plus 10b plus 7c equals 5. a plus c is 1. 2a plus b is 1. And b plus 2c is 1. Now by setting these equal to each other in different ways, you can kind of find the values. For example, if you go ahead and set these two equal to each other, b is going to cancel out. And you're going to get a equals c. Make sense? And then if you use the first, let's call this first, second, and third. I'm kind of ignoring the other equation because I'm going to use it later. If you use 1 and 3, like these two, then you'll be getting a plus c 
equals b plus 2c. And if you kind of subtract c, you get a equals b plus c. But a is the same as c, they're going to cancel out, leaving us with b equals 0. So that's what we have so far. You can go ahead and plug it into the original equation and get something from there. Are you going to get anything from there? Probably, right? If you replace a with c, you get 3c, b is 0, and c is c. This is going to give you 10c equals 5, which means c equals 1 half. Of course, you could also use another equation to get that, like this one, for example. But anyways, if c is 1 half, a is also 1 half, and b is 0, and that's pretty much it. I only had a, b, and c. So, as a result, and this is only the first method, right? Wow, took a while. If you go ahead and set this equal to the answer, and remember the answer was in the form a root 3 plus b root 5 plus c root 7, the answer is going to be 1 half root 3 plus 1 half root 7. And of course, the other terms are 0. And this is the same as root 3 plus root 7 all over 2. So it was that simple. And that's the end of the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. All right. Well, I said I was going to do third next, right? Because that's the one that's going to be incomplete. So let me just show you real quick because just the idea, I mean, that's going to be left as an exercise for you. <laughs> right? Okay. So this expression can be simplified if we use the conjugate, don't you think? Well, our teacher always said that, right? What's the conjugate? I'm going to group these together and multiply this expression by this minus that. You don't need parentheses just to emphasize the point. And if you go ahead and distribute, good luck with that. And then good luck with this. Of course, this is not the end of the end of the stuff because we still have to do another round of conjugates. Hopefully, if you have patience and time, you'll get somewhere. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method real quick. And you're going you're gonna to decide which method is the best, right? Okay. Now, since uh, square root of, um, since 5 is made up of root 5 times root 5, I'm just going to write it as root 25. That's actually going to be better for me. And another thing that I'm going to do is uh, split the root 5 into root 5 plus root 5. I mean the 2 root 5. And the reason for that, there's a really good reason, because I'm going to factor the numerator by grouping, and I rather have four terms at the bottom. You'll see in a little bit why this is helpful. If you factor out root 3 from the first group, you're going to get root 5 plus root 7. And here, root 5 is a common factor, and that's going to give you root 7 plus root 5. Notice that we get a common factor, but that's not the whole thing, right? So now, uh, I can probably just leave it like that for now. But one thing I want to do is, there is a common factor, so let's go ahead and take that out. Root 5 plus root 7 will be multiplied by root 3 plus root 5. And at the bottom, I kind of want to write my expression the same way. Like, put these two together, right? And of course, there's a plus sign. And the other term, I want to use root 3 plus root 5, the outer terms. Make sense? And notice that I have those two expressions in the numerator. What is that supposed to mean? It means that you can use substitution. Let's go ahead and call this x and look at 1 over x because 1 over x is going to be better than x. You'll see in a little bit it's going to be separable, okay? But uh, x is not. So now we are basically dividing a sum by a product which is separable and we can kind of separate it like this. Look, that's one piece. Another piece would be like that. Make sense? And when you divide, uh, root 5 plus root 7 is going to cancel out, leaving us with 1 over root 5 plus root 3. And the other term is just going to be when the, you know, uh, the other thing cancels out, root 5 plus root 7 is going to be at the bottom. All right, great. What do we do with this? Multiply by the conjugate. Okay. There's no escaping from conjugates, right? They're all everywhere. So now let's go ahead and make some room. For multiplication, it's going to be like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply this by root 5 minus root 3 over root 5 minus root 3. And this one by root 7 minus root 5 over root 7 minus root 5. And then we can go ahead and multiply these. 1 over x is going to be root 5 minus root 3 over 5 minus 3, which is 2, plus root 7 minus root 5 over 7 minus 5, which is 2. We have a common denominator. We can go ahead and write it as root 5 minus root 3 plus root 7 minus root 5 all over 2. And then the root 5 cancels out, leaving us with 
well, root 7 minus root 3 over 2. But wait a minute, we were not looking for 1 over x, we were looking for x, right? So let's go ahead and flip it one more time. This is going to be easy. 2 over root 7 minus root 3, uh-oh, we have to use conjugates again. Root 7 plus root 3, but don't worry, this is the last time. And then we're going to get x equals 2 times root 7 plus root 3, 7 minus 3 is equal to 4, 2 goes into 4 twice, and we're done. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.